Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at Wearable Technologies and I'm here with the man behind Wearable Technologies, Christian. Christian, really good event, growing, 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 year on year, great audience. Thank Very you. attentive, even though you managed to close the subway system down in Munich. They still got here this morning. Tell me why you think it is so successful, so vibrant here at the moment. It's vibrant because we have a dedicated structure here. We are trying to get the whole ecosystem behind the conference, meaning we are presenting all value chains of the wearable technologies ecosystem from the semiconductor companies to the EMS houses, which are manufacturing at later products, mm -hmm. the testing certification port, and at least on the end, the retailers. Mm. All are here. So I always mention that in a coffee break, you can create your business here yeah. directly at the conference. That's perhaps the reason why so many people are attending and so many high level people are coming. I mean, we are not talking here about just marketing things. We are really talking about business development. The next, what are the next cool projects yeah. and products coming up in the wearable technologies market? Yeah, absolutely. I spoke to one of your speakers on the first day, came here with a brand new technology, not really productized. I've been talking to a manufacturing partner, have been talking to a potential investor and today I saw them talking to an industrial designer that is in the same city as them purely by coincidence so networking opportunity is huge but also what I'm what I'm seeing this year more than ever is some really nice use cases some really nice applications for for wearables technology and wearables actually becoming physically attached to our bodies and connecting to our bodies not just a watch that happens to be on a strap, which to me is a is a dense consumer electronics product. There, there are real wearables happening. Yeah, there's much more coming, but but the market also get more mature at the moment. So we are driving this is more than 10 years already. So you can imagine that that now it's very nice to see that that big wave we created, and I'm a windsurfer, so I know how to. How to, ride, how, to ride, how to ride waves at least and I have to say this is really now a, a big big waves comparable yeah. to Hawaii Jaws or something so and, and it's really interesting to see how many industrial players are jumping on that wave at the moment and riding it with us. It, it's, it's also important that it's not just a hype. Uh, I mean uh, many things that many people are thinking that, that yeah, these smartwatches it's a big hype but I have to say the smartwatch is just one part mm. of the whole piece and, and uh, we, we have a big big volume of opportunities in the market and especially in the healthcare segment yeah. we saw already since the last 10 years a, a constantly growth rate of 20 to 23 25 percent per year in volume in applications in the healthcare market already and this will be now stimulated with the smartwatches and uh, so I, I'm looking forward what's happening in two months I mentioned that already in my keynote what what will be the big earthquake if Apple is coming out with the Apple watch yeah um, I believe it will be a stimulation for the whole market yeah and uh, that will drive us further down yeah. the road or down the wave yeah Couple of couple of other interesting points. One is what what I see here is a lot of small entrepreneurial businesses and a few large corporates. How do you manage to bring them together and get them to work comfortably together? Because to me, that's a big challenge for the corporates as much as anybody to connect with those entrepreneurs where you can actually walk on the booth and meet the founder of the company. That's a game-changing thing for them. That's totally true. But never before. Um, consumer electronics were produced by smaller companies mm. you know normally they they had their I mean 10 20 companies where which they were dealing um, and and that that's it today they have to deal with hundreds to get but on the other side it's a disruptive situation and they have to they have to deal with these smaller companies because they don't know who will be the next yeah. big one of them yeah. so and and this is the reason why all are looking into this great market at the moment but it's an obstacle for them to yeah. overcome how to deal with a company we see here in the backside of electronics I mean 130,000 employees or something in that way I mean I mean uh, they have uh, to whom should I speak yeah. to if I'm a small entity uh, or small company and therefore they the also pretty created uh, dedicated uh, incubation programs yeah. and and people uh, which are responsible just to talk to the startup teams to handle that problem yeah. let's say it's a positive yeah. thing yeah that so not many people are wanted wanted to to build a product yeah. in that field but yeah yeah. yeah, and they can take that whole fulfillment. And they need to just get more entrepreneurial, whether it's hiring entrepreneurs or just learning that language. Last question, supply chain, manufacturing processes. 
are starting to be challenged and they, these kind of companies need to have that enabling technology. What do you think are the biggest challenges in terms of manufacturing process in the wearables market that will actually, when solved, allow it to move further forward? I mean, the whole the whole manufacturing of a wearable device is highly sophisticated, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the first time in human being that you are wearing a consumer electronic device 24 hours, seven days a week. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of recommendations there, and and we are working on catalogs which have recommendations behind what should be um, done regarding standardization yeah. and so on and testing. Uh, before a wearable device is sold to the consumer. Uh, I think this is very, very important that we don't see again some recall activities like beginning of last year uh, with, a, with a smart band for one of, the, um, of our customers which, was, which, which has to recall. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but, but it's, they are always, if no new companies coming or new products are coming on the market, they are all, always obstacles, but it's important that the, 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 the manufacturers are aware of that they have to do a lot of testing for that and, and I believe this is the biggest obstacle to overcome the testing purpose and to build reliable products and on the other side also to check how could I create a product which is running more, longer than one day. I mean this is a main, a main issue how to create energy efficient devices. We have this dedicated energy, we don't have more, uh, the energy efficiency is not, uh, though the energy uh, Power is not is not growing. We we have um, um, uh, in the battery area we are on the limit mm -hmm. with lithium ionen, for example. And the problem is now how to build systems based on this limited energy with energy harvesting and other systems yeah. to overcome that problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and there we are also focusing a much. You can only overcome it with new materials, with new sensors, with new kind of haptic or, or inter interactive uh, um, user interfaces. Yeah. So there we have to look in and new connectivity protocols, which need not so much power. Yeah. This is important. Yeah. We can build today a wearable device with everything in, no problem, but yeah. it's, it's battery time after yeah, one hour is off. We have a battery yeah. behind you. So, Christian, last question. I know you're not allowed to have favorites, but as a, as a journalist, I go to an, an event that has consumer products, and I always come away thinking, what would I spend my own money on? One of the ones I chose at CES was Sensoria, who are actually here because I'm a runner. It interested me. What, what would you buy that you've seen here in the last two days? That's for me really a problem, I can tell you, because I know so many products out there and there are so many fascinating products and just to name one, it's, it's really difficult mm. for me. Um, I have here on my wrist, I have one which is very nice because it's a, a so-called, I, I, I presented yesterday in my keynote a new categorization of the smartwatch market. So we have hybrid analog smartwatches or digital smartwatches uh -huh. and in the hybrid analog smartwatch market, I believe there's a big opportunity because these are normal watches with a smart interface. Yeah. So meaning if the watch is empty, it's still a watch, you can yeah. still check your time. And, and I mean otherwise, if you just have a digital, poor digital watch, you can't look anymore at the time and mm. this, you have sent something like a plastic garbage on your on your wrist. Uh, so this is something I, I, I like very yeah. much at the moment, yeah. this trend. Uh, and, and you can see here, you, you have here a yeah. display and you yeah. can directly yeah. scroll or even if it's a normal watch. Yeah. This is something which stimulates at the moment the market and, and stimulates me. Yeah, yeah, and I think another area that's going to come into that is fashion, and I think we're going to see fashion colliding with the wearables industry, and we're already seeing Swarovski getting heavily involved with Misfit and, and partnering with different companies. Exciting stuff there. I know you have a huge amount to do, so Christian, thanks for your time. Thanks for putting on this excellent event, and I look forward to being at the next one. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome, welcome. Thank thanks, bye-bye.